it is an information item. Dr. Olivine Roberts, Teresa McEwen. Good evening, Board President Cuneo, Superintendent Raymond, and Board members. Tonight, we are pleased to bring to your attention a few key strategies designed to address college career readiness. Joining me tonight are Teresa McEwen, Interim Director of High School Reform Initiatives, Principals Phyllis, Phyllis, Phyllis Berto Cedris, Matt Turkey, and Lise Martinez, Teacher John Fleming, Students, Sue Song and Brandon Fulfer. Post-secondary partner, Dean Emir Makari of Sac State University. And industry partners, Beth Kay with the National Academy Foundation, Susan Wheeler with SMUD, and Daryl Jenkins with AT&T. The impetus for this focus is our changing yardstick, which is due to globalization, Apologize for that, which is due to globalization, a more demanding labor market, and a rapid evolution in technology. These factors continue to alter the landscape. Additionally, there is a clarion call for students to be equipped with 21st century skills such as critical thinking, problem solving, creativity, and communication. In a nutshell, we're being propelled to change, to provide our students with opportunities to not only beat the odds, but change the odds by strengthening the linkage between preschool 12 system and post-secondary. Our goal is to provide an education that serves as a gateway, making it possible for all students to be college career ready when they exit our system. To that end, tonight we will share with you three key levers. The Sacramento Pathways to Success, a partnership for college to career, our graduate profile, and lastly, the linked learning approach. Collectively, all three specifically target college career readiness and provide opportunities for many students to have post-secondary options. Our first key lever is the establishment of an, <coughs> excuse me, of an educational partnership. Pillar one describes an ambitious vision, the creation of a learning environment which provides all students the supports needed to graduate college and career ready. This goal cannot be accomplished by the district alone. We must engage our post-secondary institutions. This has resulted in the creation of a seamless educational collaborative with the California State University Sacramento and Sacramento City College aimed at improving student achievement and teacher quality. The conception of this partnership was sparked by our superintendent, Jonathan Raymond. Knowing that students are more likely to earn a credential or a degree if they are prepared for college level work upon enrollment, and knowing that our graduates are more likely to attend Sacramento City College and Sac State, in 2010, he presented the idea of forming a broad-based coalition to the CEOs at Sac State and Los Rios Community Colleges. Excited about the opportunity and eager to build their knowledge base as to how to bring this to fruition, the three leaders visited Long Beach School District to learn about its educational partnership, the Long Beach Promise. This was developed to remove any rocks in the river that would hinder students, their matriculation from preschool through high school to college and career. Energized from the visit, 
the leaders charged the members of the three institutions to create a collaborative planning committee. Now a year in the planning, the Sacramento Pathways to Success, a partnership for college to career, has emerged and its public launch will take place on April 30th at Kennedy High School. A formal invitation will be sent to you in the very near future. Over the year, the planning committee has also developed a common language and established a memorandum of understanding for the sharing of data. And they have begun addressing curriculum alignment, alignment concerns. Like the Long Beach model, this partnership will create a seamless transition preschool to career for all students in Sacramento. Ensure that more students graduate from college prepared, excuse me, graduate from high school prepared for college and also will encourage and support ongoing collaboration and reciprocal learning among the institutions. The Sacramento Pathways to, Su to Success, a partnership for college to career is committed to working together to define post-secondary readiness, creating environments that will result in students being fully prepared for the next level in their education, be it elementary school, middle school, high school, or postgraduate work. The partnership is committed to creating a clear, simple, localized, easy to read roadmap to college and career success, available in many languages and will help our families, especially those whose children will be the first in the family to attend college, successfully navigate the system. The partnership is committed to identifying stumbling blocks or rocks in the river at transitional times, primarily elementary to middle, middle to high, and high school to college and then creating viable, easily, easily accessible support structures. The partnership is committed to working collaboratively to engage all stakeholders in this journey, resulting in a quality, well-prepared workforce that will keep the capital region prosperous and productive for generations to come. We would all agree that public education is a smart investment for the Sacramento region. We would also agree that public higher education plays an essential role in preparing highly skilled graduates who are ready for the regional workforce. Each certificate and degree awarded presents an individual and a family who will have improved employment opportunities and the likelihood of a greater economic prosperity. The benefits of the Sacramento Pathways to Success are a stronger, more aligned preschool 20 system in which our students will progress seamlessly with little to no need for remediation when moving from one level to the next. Greater access to education for our area students because we know that students who graduate from high school fully prepared for post-secondary option of their choice are more likely to remain in school and persist until certificate or degree attainment. More equitable access is also a benefit for our first generation to college and minority students. They will have the knowledge, the skills, and the dispositions to successfully pursue an array of post-secondary options. And lastly, our future graduates will be fully prepared to excel in the workplace of the future, contributing to a robust economy and creating a future of which we can only dream. Our next key lever is our graduate profile. To fully realize the goals of Pillar 1, college career-ready students, it is incumbent upon us to have a clear, defined, and measurable common vision of what is meant to be college career-ready. 
The graduate profile is the district's approach to defining this common measurable vision. The portrait of a college career ready student must encompass more than the academic readiness described in our standards. It must include competencies aligned with the following three capitals. Intellectual capital, the knowledge and skills needed to successfully engage in the reasoning, critical thinking, and problem solving required in rigorous academic coursework. These include competencies such as writing skills, research skills, language and grammar proficiency, advanced level mathematics proficiency, and science knowledge. The next capital is social capital, the knowledge and skills that facilitate learning and productive relationships. These include social and emotional skills such as life management, self-awareness, relationship skills, social awareness, and decision-making skills. The last capital is cultural capital, the knowledge and skills needed to access resources and effectively navigate the norms, the values, and the behavioral expectations within various cultural contexts, such as the educational system, the workplace, the community, and the home. These include competencies such as the appropriate behavior, the language practices, and the ways in which one presents his or herself in various settings and situations. The process for the development of this profile has been a very robust one. Using an inclusive and open-ended process, we have engaged a very broad, cross-sectional, and diver diverse representation of the Sacramento community, including leaders, teachers, counselors, students, parents, industry and community partners, as well as central office staff in identifying the knowledge, the skills, the behaviors, attitudes that are essential to poise our students for success beyond our preschool 12 system. Basically, defining and describing what it means, what it looks like to be college and career ready. The profile is aligned to national and state frameworks, such as the Common Core State Standards, the Partnership for 21st Century firm Framework, the Linked Learning College and Career Readiness Framework, Career Technical Education Guidelines, as well as the Next Generation Science Standards. The resulting conversations yielded the following domains or overarching categories that reflect a college career graduate. They are critical thinking and problem solving, creativity, innovation, and entrepreneurship, communication and collaboration, evaluation of media, and lastly, life and leadership skills. Holistically, the, these domains address academic, technical, as well as our 21st century knowledge and skills, and they are aligned to the three previously mentioned capitals, intellectual, social, and cultural. For each domain or overarching category, there is a set of indicators or competencies that provide more specificity as to what we see a student doing to indicate that he or she is demonstrating proficiency in that particular area. For example, the life and leadership skills domain which captures very, excuse me, very adamantly the social and cultural capital calls for students to A, set goals and manage work and personal re responsibilities, B, understand and respect multiple perspectives and culture, C, conduct themselves ethically and with integrity, and D, participate in community service and the democratic process. To date, we have had approximately 1,000 stakeholders to engage in this process. Tonight, we would like to grant you 
the opportunity to do so. So using the ladder feedback protocol, we welcome you to share your thoughts with us. We would be happy to receive them tonight or receive them via email. Moving forward, the profile will be benchmarked to different grade bands and will serve as a barometer of whether students are on track and making adequate progress towards being college and career ready. Plus, it will also help to inform us about the necessary prevention and intervention measures that are needed to ensure that our students are progressing as expected. As such, we have convened a committee of stakeholders to engage in contextualizing the domains and indicators by defining and establishing grade band indicators, benchmarks, excuse me, and design progress monitoring tools. We will continue to engage stakeholders around the profile to solicit their feedback and input as a means to ensure the development of a very comprehensive, coherent, user-friendly description of what it is to be college and career ready. The development of the benchmarks and the progress monitoring tools is an extensive pro process and requires quality time. A large proportion of this work will be accomplished over the summer months. We will share the proposed outcomes of that work with other stakeholders in the fall and plan to return to the board in November for board action. We have shared with you two of the three key levers, and now I present to you Teresa McEwen, who will share our third key lever linked to learning. Good evening, Board President Cunha, Superintendent Raymond, and members of the Board of Education. Thank you for the opportunity to share with you our primary approach to high school redesign, Link Learning. Link Learning is a proven approach that prepares our students for the opportunities and challenges that await them as they enter the adult world, post-secondary education, the world of work, and active participation in our democratic society. We engage in this work through, through partnership with ConnectEd, the California Center for College and Career, the National Academy Foundation, the California Partnership Academy Office within the Department of Education, our Regional Occupational Program in collaboration with the Sacramento County Office of Education, as well as our partnership with local post-secondary institutions, in particular Sacramento City College and California State University, Sacramento. California's high schools are not working for large numbers of young people. We know that. Almost a third of our new ninth graders drop out before graduation. Another third finish high school but lack the academic and technical readiness to succeed in college or career. Only a third of the high school students in our state currently graduate on time and transition easily into post-secondary education. Link learning is a promising approach to improving high school while also connecting to current and future needs in our local and global economy. It provides a challenging vehicle that inspires students to learn and gives students access to education that is both rigorous and relevant. The great promise of this approach is in its design. Link learning is designed to break down the silos of the comprehensive high school, designed to link learning, to integrate learning, to make learning real and exciting for the thousands of students who are, or who can become, bored with the conventional, traditional, departmentalized, lecture-focused high school experience that worked well for form former generations of students. Link Learning answers the question, why do I need to learn this? Four principles guide the Link Learning approach. Prepare, pathways prepare students for the full range of post-secondary learning options, four-year public and private universities, two-year colleges, technical programs, and military training. Link Learning prepares students for the full range of careers across the 15 industry sectors in the state of California. It is not the ROP of old that focused only on entry-level blue-collar jobs. 
Pathways lead to a full range of post-secondary and career opportunities by eliminating tracking and keeping all options open after high school. Pathways connect academics to real world applications by integrating challenging academics with a demanding technical curriculum. Pathways have a proven track record. Across the state, they have been shown to improve student attendance, graduation rates, A to G completion rates, and persistence through the all-important first year of post-secondary education. The four components of the link learning are as follows. A challenging academic component that meets the UC A to G entrance requirement and prepares students for success without remediation in California's community colleges and universities, technical schools, and work-based apprenticeship programs. A demanding technical sequence that delivers the concrete knowledge and skills so in demand by 21st century employers. A variety of work-based learning experiences from on-campus speakers, skill building exercises, and career fairs, to off-campus tours of industry facilities and offices, job shadow opportunities, and internships that offer opportunities to learn through real-world real experiences that complement classroom instruction. Wraparound supports are coordinated by the faculty and counselors assigned to the pathway. All students assigned to link learning pathways are expected to take, I'm sorry, all adults assigned to link learning pathways are expected to take responsibility for all students in the pathway. Support services include individual and group counseling and referrals to partner agencies, as well as additional instruction and support with basic skills so that students are prepared to succeed in challenging college prep courses. Link learning, by design, creates an environment conducive to student success. At the comprehensive high school, small schools within a school are created to personalize the learning experience for students. A group of up to 500 students, approximately 150 per grade level, in grades 9 to 12, taught by a selected group of teachers, engage in rigorous four-year course of study designed to prepare students for career and post-secondary study in an in-demand industry sector such as healthcare, engineering, media arts, IT, business, finance, or marketing. Connected resources guide the development of professional learning communities of practice. The link learning behaviors of learning and teaching known in the field as BLTs provide teachers with guidance and feedback as they design integrated standards-based units of study with embedded performance assessments. Industry partnerships are not an afterthought. Industry partners are involved early in the design. They guide input as the four-year course sequence is developed and as the integrated units of study are created. They have opportunity to work hand-in-hand -hand with teachers during each step of pathway design. Sacramento City Unified School District began the journey of pathway development through the District Link Learning Initiative funded by the James Irvine Foundation in 2009 with four identified pathways. In the three intervening years, pathways have expanded across our district. Today we have link learning pathways in various stages of development at the five small schools and each comprehensive high school. Pathway development is an ongoing process. Years can elapse from the day a pathway is first discussed until the day it receives certification as a sustaining pathway. We have 28 pathways in various stages of development, 14 established, shown in bold in the next couple of slides, and 14 pathways in development. On this page, you see the pathways at our small high schools. Health Professions is Link Learning certified. Carver proceeds with certification in May. New Tech High School is also Link Learning certified. The Met Sacramento, a big picture school, is scheduled for a May 2013 certification visit. And just today, the School of Engineering and Science completed their on-site link learning certification visit. I will now give you examples of the expansion and deepening of the link learning approach at our comprehensive high schools. <laughs> Much has been accomplished this school year. In the interest of time, I will highlight the work of selected pathways. The Lawn Public Policy Academy, for example, at C.K. McClatchy, began last year with one cohort of 10th graders. This year it expanded to 10th and 11th grade, and next year 
This year they are working on their four-year course of study. Next year they will enroll students grades 9 through 12. Luther Burbank High School has six long-standing smaller learning communities, one of which, Law and Social Justice, has an embedded California Partnership Academy with a sequenced career technical component. One area of focus for Luther Burbank has been the expansion of their work-based learning opportunities, focused on providing summer internships for students in 11th and 12th grade. Kennedy High School provides smaller learning community experiences for students enrolled in their culinary arts, criminal justice, and school of public service academies. Rosemont High School, well known for its Green Academy, which offers integrated learning experiences in two industry sectors, culinary and masonry. American Legion, our alternative high school, continues to provide students with rigorous engaging learning opportunities in two industry sectors, culinary arts and business. Hiram Johnson High School administration has made pathway development a focus of their efforts this year. National Academy Foundation support staff, Connect Ed coaches, and central office staff has supported the coordinated efforts of site administration and pathway teachers. Tonight I am proud to report that Johnson Corporate Business Academy, known on campus as JCBA, is the first pathway to comprehensive high school to receive certification. Here with me tonight is Beth Kay, Regional Director of the National Academy Foundation, to tell you about the NAF certification process and recognize JCBA staff and Hiram Johnson High School Administration for achieving this level of success. Beth? Good evening, Board President Cuneo, Superintendent Raymond, and Board members. Um, as Teresa said, my name is Beth Cam with the National Academy Foundation. JCBA came on board with the National Academy Foundation about a year ago. They came on board because they were very interested in using the curriculum that we've developed over years that is industry vetted. And um, I think that one of the things I wanted to say tonight to you guys about this is that linked learning, if you think about it as an umbrella under which many different kinds of models can exist that prepare kids for college and career readiness, NAF is one of those models. And so as JCBA has been working with us diligently, um, I am here tonight um, proudly to congratulate the principal, um, Cedros, John Fleming, the director, his team of teachers, and all the hard work of the students in, in being the very first um, comprehensive high school program to be both NAF certified and linked learning certified. Thank you. Thank you, Beth. Currently, we have three linked learning pathways under construction and emerging status. Kennedy High School Pathway Leads and Site Administration are developing a linked learning. Thank you. Are developing a linked learning pathway in the design and manufacturing industry sector. The plan for this yet-to-be-named pathway is to open doors next year with one cohort of approximately 39th graders and one co cohort of approximately 30 10th graders. The Health and Sports Academy at Rosemont High School is also under construction. Still to be named, this pathway is in the very early stages of development. The pathway plans to open with one cohort of 10th grade students. Tonight we present to you one of the first fruits or results of the Sacramento Pathways to Success, a partnership for college to career, the Energy, Science, and Engineering Academy, a partnership between two Sacramento City Unified High Schools, Unified School District High Schools, one small school, School of Engineering and Science, and one comprehensive high school, Rosemont High School, California State University, Sacramento, and Sacramento Municipal Utilities District. Here to tell you more about the effort are Mr. Matt Turkey, Principal at SES, Ms. Lise, Mar Ms. Lise Martinez, Principal at Rosemont High School, and representatives from SMUD and California State University. Good evening, board member, Superintendent Raymond. Um, I'm really proud of this particular slide here because of the partnerships that it represents with SMUD, Sac State, Sac City Unified School District, Rosemont High School, and the School of Engineering and Sciences. So it represents opportunity, 
and surely this is opportunity for students, but actually it's even more of an opportunity for consumers, for the city, and for the state. Because the truth is, we actually need young people. We need their creativity, we need their drive, we need their sense of fairness and justice. And you know, kids don't drop out because things are hard. It's because they get bored or it's irrelevant. So this is a wonderful opportunity to take on some of the really tough challenges that we all know are pending in terms of energy. So I'm looking forward to breakthroughs with electricity, water, wind, and I can't resist pointing out that um, thanks to Suresh Vadva and David Stafford, who are present, we have students right now at Rosemont that are earning three credits of college credit right now just because they wanted to jumpstart this program. So this is an investment, and we're proud to bring it forward. Thank you. Good evening, members of the board. Um, I'm Matt Turkey, the interim principal at School of Engineering and Sciences, and um, it's great to be here. So, um, okay, so um, basically the goal of this, this whole collaboration is basically to create a pipeline which goes from, um, from school through college and then on to industry. And I think it's a recognition that basically schools aren't... Uh, an, an, an end unto themselves. So basically, when our students finish school, they're, they're not done. They, we, we need our students to be able to go through into college and then into a career and be, sex, and be successful when they do that. Um, the students which we're preparing with this collaboration, um, we want our students to be not only um, prepared as far as content, but also as far as 21st century skills. We believe that this sort of collaboration which we're doing right now with Sacramento State University and with SMUD absolutely does that. Um, they can inform our curriculum. We can get our teachers prepared, knowing exactly what they need to do so they can be successful within that college and career context. <laughs> Good evening, board members. Susan Wheeler. I'm with SMUD. And I'm just one of the many businesses in the region that really believes that it's important for the business community to help our students connect what they're learning in the classroom with what their future careers might be. This is just one example of uh, helping students understand how math skills can um, help uh, them collect more solar energy. We have a solar sunflower at School of Energy and uh, School of Engineering and Sciences. So Solar Sunflower, the students really understand the concept of how math can help collect more, um, just by changing the angle of the, uh, of the solar panels can help them collect more solar energy. So when we talk about um, pipeline, um, in our industry actually, we talk about pipeline, you know, a lot of times people think about um, the energy pipeline. This in turn is really a different type of pipeline. It's a, it's a workforce pipeline. And it starts, as Matt mentioned, in, in school. Um, in, in this case, in our example, it starts in high school. Partnership between uh, the uh, Rosemont and School of Engineering and Sciences, our partnership with um, Sacramento State University and with SMUD. So we're, um, our partnership role is really to help, again, I think as you've heard often, um, students connect what they're learning in the classroom with what their future career might be. And each player in this uh, pipeline, workforce pipeline, has, has a role. Um, it's to make sure that each step of the way students can be prepared for real jobs and real career opportunities. Our partnership in terms of industry takes the form of workshops, um, um, working with uh, teachers in terms of curriculum development, in terms of guest speakers, internships, mentors, and eventually jobs for students. Thank you. Good evening, board members, uh, superintendent. Uh, my name is Amir Jose Makadi. I'm the dean of the College of Engineering and Computer Science at Sac State. It's a great pleasure to be collaborating with the school district, uh, with SMUD, uh, trying to bring a, uh, a, a new vision uh, to the schools uh, because as we heard before, what we want is very little remediation or no remediation at all. So when the students come in, we can be productive and keep moving forward. So this partnership, uh, we've been meeting for uh, nine months 
um, and have already established a, a pilot program. As was mentioned, students from both high schools are already receiving accelerated college entrance credits. Uh, very exciting in their introduction to engineering course. Now what we're going to be doing this summer is to develop uh, workforce uh, workshops for the pipeline collaborators. What we're going to do is five days, we're going to be hosting them in our campus, in our College of Engineering. We're going to have authentic and realistic engineering experiences for the school teachers. Uh, we're we're going to be working in partnership with SMUD employees, our faculty, and the teachers to develop the curriculum. And then uh, once we see how it starts working during the fall, in the spring, we're going to have three additional days of professional development for the teachers and try to uh, um, advance what we have done so far. Next, please. So these are the areas of where we're going to work uh, for the five days. There's going to be intensive work on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. We're going to be working on wind projects on Tuesday, on water and tidal uh, projects, on Wednesday, solar energy, Thursday, electric transportation, electric vehicles, and finally on Friday, the communication and uh, telecommunications as well. So what we will be doing is during the morning sessions, we'll be working on the projects, how uh, each one of these realistic projects are going to be presented, and then at lunchtime, we're going to have uh, experts in, in each one of these fields speaking to the teachers and to, to the faculty and to, uh, and to our collaborators. And finally, in the afternoon, we're going to work to integrate all of what we've learned that day into the curriculum. So that is the plan that we're going to do. And then at the end, uh, review the panels. And um, so if we go to the next slide, you see, you see the team. Now it doesn't want to go. Or, there it goes. Oh. There it is. Uh, the team that has been working very, very hard over the past nine months, and I'd like to stress again my colleague, uh, Dr. Suresh Vadva, who's the chair of electrical engineering, and he happens to be the director, uh, national director of the Institute of Electrical and Electronic Engineers K-12 through program, so it fits in very nicely of what we're doing. Thank you. Thank you, team. We look forward to the results of the effort. You've heard about link learning. You've heard about our progress and our plan for emerging pathways. The true power of pathways in action is in the linking. What does it look like when we link these programs? What happens when we link these programs together? When we link the academics, we link the career technical education, we link the many work-based learning opportunities, we link the group and personalized individual wraparound supports. What does link learning look like within Sacramento Unified School District? I now present Mr. via video, Mr. Chris Sheshelman, physics and engineering teacher in the TED, technology and engineering De design pathway at Hiram Johnson, who will speak to you electronically regarding the power of the link learning experience. One of the things that I think is really great about the link learning pathways is that it's a family. Um, students start off sophomore year, hopefully in the future it will be freshman year. Um, so they stay together and they learn together for either three or four years, which develops some good relationships for them, um, for one thing. But more importantly, because they travel each class together, it allows us as teachers to create curriculum that stretches across from course to course to course. Students who maybe have known nothing about technology or whatever field they're interested in, and then are immersed in through a day-to-day -day experience. And we found that that reduces behavior problems, and creates more interest in students, um, students who have a lot of sense of pride about what they're doing, uh, as opposed to having this disconnect with the things they're learning in the class. into the class and kind of think to themselves, why am I learning this? Why should I even bother? This teacher's making me do math in a non-math class. This teacher is making me push myself. And I'm not used to, used to having to do that. Um, but when they go from engineering class or to engineering class, after using or learning the physics that applies directly to the 
things they're designing and building to make them work effectively. And they connect instantly with it. You don't have to sell them on why they're running physics. First Robotics, wow, it's, it's uh, they like to call it a varsity sport for the mind. I, I think that is even selling it short. It's just this huge, intense, uh, even, I would say, so rigorous, so challenging that I, I don't know of many engineering careers where they're pushed to the limits that these kids are. These kids are completely immersed and exposed um, in this giant problem they have to solve. Design huge 120-pound robots to compete against other robots in unique events every year um, at all hours of the night, sometimes seven days a week, under intense pressure and deadlines. And as we all know, this brings out the best and worst in people. When the dust settles, when it's all over, regardless of how well the team did competitively, every student is always better off. They have a new understanding of what can be earned from hard work, what it means to fail, 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 and then finally succeed. The important part is that you don't quit along the way. Now more opportunities to see link learning in action. Linking academics with real world critical thinking and problem solving activities, oftentimes with the support of industry partners, results in challenging activities that fully engage students in the learning process in our advanced mathematics courses. Linking academics with career technical education using state of the art equipment, teachers with industry experience, and transformed classrooms that emulate authentic work environments allow for hands on applied learning that provides both relevant and challenging experiences for our students. Linking academics and career technical education with work-based learning activities provides valuable experiences for students outside of the classroom and further prepares them for post-secondary opportunities and success in the workplace. Linking academics, career technical education, and work-based learning activities with on-demand, real-time, wraparound student supports in the form of school counselors and mentors from industry and post-secondary institutions helps our students stay on track and achieve the goal of being both college and career ready. The link learning approach results in confident, self-reliant, prepared graduates who are becoming active, contributing participants and leaders in our communities. Young adults ready for the challenges and opportunities that await them as they reap the rewards from a rigorous and relevant education. Using the inquiry process to examine data, student performance will be measured via common assessments, performance-based assessments, and multiple opportunities for students to demonstrate knowledge and mastery of technical skills. Two link learning pathways are currently piloting opportunities to demonstrate college and career readiness via a senior success portfolio and defensive learning, a capstone activity that pulls knowing, doing, and reflecting into one place into one moment. It is the final inquiry, the final essential question, the final exhibition. Joint class and field observations provide unique opportunities for staff and industry partners to gather information regarding student performance and to jointly reflect on student progress toward intended outcomes. Summative assessments include high school graduation rates, UC A to G completion rates, and first year college persistence rates. Recent results are as follows. During the 2009-10 school year and the 2010-11 school year, over 90% of pathway enrolled seniors graduated. Approximately 15% of Sacramento City Unified School District link learning graduates completed A to G course sequence as compared to 36% of high school students statewide. College persistence. Approximately 71% of 2009-10 and 74% of 2010-11 link learning graduates completed their first year in a post-secondary program. Data for the class of 2012 will be released shortly. The college persistence data is another example of our collaboration with our post-secondary partners. As Sacramento Pathways to Success, a partnership for college to career moves to implementation phase. We look forward to further opportunities to share data and inform practice 
so that each year, increasing numbers of our graduates persist and successfully complete post-secondary programs. Program effectiveness and continual improvement is guided by quality criteria provided by our partners in this effort. Earlier this evening, you heard about the rigorous certification criteria in place to certify National Academy Foundation Academies. This certification tool is used for our NAF Academies as part of the NAF and ConnectEd partnership. Our Link Learning Pathways use the Link Learning Quality Criteria for continuous improvement and certification. Link Learning identifies 40 criteria and four components. Pathway design, engaged learning, system support, and data and impact. Pathway staff and site administrators use the certification criteria annually to self-assess self and develop action plans. Pathways that have met quality criteria in the four components prepare for link learning certification. To date, Health Professions High School and New Tech High School have received certification. This spring, three more pathways, including SES that we mentioned, move towards certification. Feedback from staff, students, and industry partners informs local pathway decisions. Their feedback also informs central office staff when developing district systems of implementation and when working with our post-secondary partners. Local feedback also informs link learning, connected staff for local and state decisions, for example, coaching, technical assistance, and course development decisions. Now I invite to the stand Principal Ms. Feliz Berto Cedros from Hiram Johnson High School, lead teacher John Fleming from Johnson Corporate Business Academy, and if they're still here because maybe past, past the hour, past their bedtime, but um, we invited two students, Sue Song representing Hiram Johnson High School and Brandon Bolfer representing the School of Engineering and Science to come forward to speak along with our industry partner, Mr. Daryl Jenkins. I now invite you to the podium. Good evening, Board Superintendent. Uh, my name is uh, Felicia Bert Cedars. I'm principal of Hiram Johnson High School. And uh, I really take this opportunity to uh, thank um, the staff and thanking the district for all the assistance that we have had over Hiram Johnson and help us to reach this NAF certification. And uh, as Mr. Fleming, the coordinator for that uh, pathway, well, to us, it's not an easy process. It took us a long time in coordinating it. I am extremely proud to be the principal of Hiram Johnson, being one of the first staff certified high schools here in Northern California. And that's not my work, it's staff's work. And really, it's a collaboration between staff and central office and uh, our partners that have us, helped us along the way. I can tell you one thing from being principal that I have noticed with the, um, the implementation process, or at least the outcome for our students. And uh, as we move to this new graduation, um, um, portfolio of fill this new graduation um, profile, we noticed that the being college and career ready is one and the same. So if you're ready for post-secondary, you have all the attributes and the skill sets for uh, being successful, successful in the industry sector. So having said that, I thank you so very much. Um, it's late in the evening. I would like to introduce Mr. John Fleming, the coordinator for JCBA and our first uh, NAF certified link learning pathway here in Sac City. Thank you very much. Good evening, President Caneo, Superintendent Raymond, board members. My name is John Fleming, and I have the pleasure of being the lead teacher for Johnson Corporate Business Academy, again called JCBA on campus. I'd like to just make a few comments about the work that we've done. I'll keep it very brief. Uh, first, I'd like to recognize and thank particularly the staff of JCBA. We've got a couple of them here in the room that came tonight. It's an incredible group of teachers that's worked very, very hard and put a lot of hours in to make this happen and make good things happen for our students. Give you an, oh, excuse me, I'd also like to, uh, to thank the uh, office, the district office and the support from Teresa McEwen and her folks and the time that they put in to support us, getting a coach for us and working with us through a lot of long hours as well. A Little bit about the work that we've put in during the summer, the JCBA st staff came together and spent a week at the school, uh, six hour days, putting time in to plan for not only the next school year and what we were going to do, but spent a lot of time planning for the certification process to make sure that we had 
pieces in place and we knew the work that we needed to do went so we could hit the ground running in September. So the staff put in quite a bit of time, uh, real intensive time during the summer to make that happen. During the school year, we came together two evenings for three hour sessions, total of six hours, to develop a common rubric for communication and writing skills for our pathway, for our, our academy. And then we put that to work. I want to tell you a couple of just quick stories that both happened this week, I think, that will really highlight the work that JCBA is doing for our students. The first was, happened to me earlier this week, I was in visiting Mr. Dowenhauer, our business teacher, and he proudly showed me what he was doing with a program that we have purchased called Turnitin. If you're not familiar with Turnitin, it's an online essay submission program across all this, all, actually we bought it for the whole school, so it's for, um, for every teacher to use, and we use it across our pathway. So the teacher, the, excuse me, students can write one essay on a topic developed by the teachers so that it works across the curriculum, and then each teacher then grades that essay for their particular course. So instead of students trying to write three or four essays, they're writing one essay, counts for multiple classes. So I was in visiting Mr. Dowenhauer, and he was proudly showing me how he had it set up. He was using the turn it in and grading the student essay. Mr. Bedford, our English teacher, had already given his grades. And then the students can go online and get the feedback from both their teachers. The same kind of collaboration is happening between world history and English as well, and in the upper grade levels also. So we're doing a lot of collaborative work for our students. The other story, which I think is maybe even more exciting, is one of our students has a passion for auto body work and came to us about a month or so ago struggling with a senior project, trying to find a place for an internship. Staff rallied around him very quickly. Phone calls were made. We were able to find him an internship at Bertolucci's. Started about three weeks ago. Bertolucci's was so impressed, we just found out yesterday that they had offered him a position, paid position. So he's now got a part-time position that will help him pay his way through college because of, again, the supports that the academy offers and working with the student. So that's just a little bit about what we're doing. I'd uh, love to, to answer any questions you have later on, but I do want to now introduce our student so she can get out of here and get to bed so you can get the student perspective. So one of our students, Sue Song. Good, e good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Sue Song, and I want to share with you a story of how JCBA, Johnson Corporate Business Academy, has affected my life. Hiring Johnson High School offered JCBA, which is a, path, a pathway that provides a business education with experiences and skills to to prepare students for post-secondary education or to enter the job force. JCPA promotes stronger communication skills as well as teamwork. Students are encouraged to, dis to discover their own potentials and I have learned about my own. Not only did I learn to have the opportunity to learn business skills in the classroom, but I was able to pra practice what I learned through internship and gain the conf confidence as I prepare for post-secondary education. At first, I joined JC Bay to follow my older sister's footsteps, but I realized I am the person I, I am today because I was exposed to the many opportunity offered by the academy. I wanted to give back to my community and to help the community through building relationships. JCBA has taught me how to network with organizations such as VITA, which is a which is a free income tax return program for the lower income families. The academy provides a family atmosphere where teachers help students and care about their success. As a student, I have the support and encouragement to excel. Without these academy teachers, many students will not have the opportunity to achieve and create a future. Thank you. Good evening, board members. Um, I would like to announce that over the past two days, we have had the link learning team, the certification team, come over to SES and give us some very positive feedback. Um, we will be receiving a letter of recognition within about four to six weeks. 
Um, I would like to just go through just a few of the positives which they have mentioned, and maybe you can kind of envision these positives throughout kind of linked learning schools. So um, firstly was the robustness of the 7 through 12 pathway program, um, the rigorous um, technical core there, which starts in grade 7 um, with computer programming, and grade 8 and computer programming goes through grade 9, um, through to grade 10 with the CAD course, computer-assisted design, then robotics in 11th and 12th grade. Um, the project-based learning was also mentioned, and as well as uh, Chris Shesselsman team um, over at UC Davis, we also have a team of FRC Robotics over at UC Davis at this moment. Um, they will be competing tomorrow and uh, over Saturday as well. Um, the other things which were mentioned were um, the high expectations, the high rigor of the school, the supportive teachers, um, and basically, the, um, the engagement of the students, the culture being one of engaged students, students who would like to push themselves, students who want more, students who will um, take advantage of the tutoring which is offered without the stigma attached and think, you know what, I want to get better at this. I'm going to go to that tutoring. Um, it's also a school culture in which teacher leaders um, flourish with a very kind of reinvigorated staff. Um, but they were very, very positive about all the faculty and all the students, and I just wanted to share that with everybody here. Um, without further ado, I'd also like to pass on to our ASB president, Salvatore Angrisani. Thank you, board, uh, Superintendent Raymond. Um, my name's Sal. I have a lot to say. I'm so happy that clock isn't running, but I'll be brief as possible. So, integrated unit with Link Learning. Uh, we've had... Uh, We've had so much for the past years, um, but last year well, is what I'll reference to. Um, last year, we basically had an integrated unit, and we had to take action into our community. That means we had to get involved in our community, and as a class, we've, we actually took action, which is cool because usually things are hypothetical. And what's awesome about link learning is that uh, it kind of goes off of Gandhi's quote or the, uh, the Chinese proverb, um, uh, tell me, I'll forget, uh, show me, I may remember, or... Uh, involve me and I'll understand and that's exactly what I've uh, what I've come to realize is that I completely understand uh, after uh, building a solar power boat with SMUD thanks to Solar Regatta and uh, after writing a letter to Congresswoman Matsui telling her that a uh, certain uh, uh, wind turbine should be put in d different places and uh, there's so much with FRC along with FRC they're not considered the uh, part of the integrated unit but uh, like the coach, or not the coach, the teacher of uh, Kennedy's FRC program was saying, uh, it's a varsity sport for the mind. And um, I'm so happy to be given the opportunity not to be part of it uh, because I'm actually more of a physical guy, uh, but um, to be uh, associated with it. And uh, Aaliyah Peters back there, she can uh, definitely uh, say, they at least, uh, how many hours per week do you think they spend at school? Yeah, and that's not including the vacation time that they spend doing it and uh, the, the holidays. It's awesome. Uh, along with the integrated unit, um, that's it for now. Thank you very much. Um, excuse me, Board. This will be the last time I come up, I promise. I do really want to recognize that we do have um, members of our advisory board here. And the one more thing which the, um, the visiting team um, mentioned is that we have a very broadly represented advisory board. Who, uh, we meet very regularly. And we've got some really big hitters there as well. We have um, Society of Women Engineers. We have Air Resources Board. We have Sac State. We have SMUD. And I'd just like to uh, recognize them because they're right here now. Okay, three other things, real quick. Uh, achievements, uh, recently uh, Samuel Estigoy, a friend of mine, a senior, he uh, was uh, uh, awarded third place for inventing a, the, one of the first uh, solar-powered uh, cell phone uh, shells for an iPhone, along with um, an achievement of Xavier Lamphere. Um, although he has a 3.0, which is impressive, um, it just goes to show that after taking the placement test at uh, Sac State, he was uh, placed in uh, calculus. And it goes to show that uh, if you have a 3.0, you don't have to be, in order to get into calculus, you don't have to be a 4.0 student. Uh, 
third thing, uh, um, I was, uh, I got the opportunity to work at Dale Engineering as a machinist slash janitor um, because I went to a school of engineering and sciences and because I had that CAD background at um, SES. Thank you. Now our industry partner and great supporter, Mr. Daryl Jenkins. Try to hurry along here. <laughs> uh, President uh, Cuneo, Cuneo, uh, Superintendent Raymond, board members. Um, you've seen me here on different occasions advocating different things, but I want to tell you, this is the, the most awesome thing that you're about to hopefully implement. This is the future. We talk about the future. One of the most important things that you could see is that you've heard about is now you need to think about that we're trying to move to the next part of where we are as a community. The fact that we, we grew up in the industrial era, right? Mechanical things. We are now in the electronic era. It's not blue collar anymore. It's green collar. And green collar has a bunch of different facets to it which means that this technology, the doctor, everybody's using something that's going to be generated around technology. This piece of what you see, Mr. I, Mr. Cedros, I, I got to tell you, I went over to his school years ago when he wasn't the, the principal and the, the, the was in trouble. And now I've been there several times and I've been to uh, their technology center. They have these forums and they have these programs when you come over and the kids are jumping up through the wolf, through the roof. They're, they're so excited about what they're doing. It is amazing. It is, it is something that all schools had that kind of a culture and excitement. And so just to let you know that one of the things that's really important and passionate about all of this, and, you know, and, I, and I said my name, Daryl Jenkins, I hope. I'm excited about this. I, I work for at and I'm, I'm the uh, area manager for Northern California for all technology engineering. And I hire folks. And I hire folks, many from Sac State, so far that's come through, I've hired four, four people already that from their engineering department. And they come in with these skills. And, I, and, and they have this critical thinking. They have this ability to come in and make an understanding of the problems and challenges. All of what you folks do, I get nervous all the time when I see a commercial and somebody's doing something, gee whiz, wonderful. That means i got to put stuff in the network so that you're happy all the time. It's really a challenge. And when I get young people that can come in and in three months can manage an engineering desk, have uh, uh, 30 offices of technology that they have to deploy and, and can come in and do that, it's due to the fact that they have this wonderful understanding of what they need to do and how to critically think about, okay, if I'm running out of bandwidth over here, what technology do I need to put it in? And when I see that these things are, are moving differently and then come up and say, I have these different types of technology, how can I do it quicker, faster, sooner? And this all comes from this kind of stuff. The, the, the challenge that, that we have is putting it before them. See, they have it. Most of you know that if you had a problem with your smartphone, if you gave it to a young person, they got it. So here it is. It's fixed. And they go on about their business. I got a young person right now that came up to me and, and said, Mr. Jenkins, what do I do with this? And I said, what do you do with what? And he says, well, I wanted to play games on my phone. And I made up a game. I, cr I created a folder on my phone. And now I play it on my phone. He didn't even know how to do this. He figured it out. And I told him, I said, do you know that if you had a, an app, you could actually sell that? You could actually start selling. He says, what's an app? So if we don't expose these young people to this kind of technology and get them going in all these different areas, you know, this is how we solve the human condition problems. One other thing, and I'll close with this, because the... the uh, the robotics program has a piece, and, and because of this program that they have there, now I'm a, a judge. I mean, I started just going watching. Now I'm a judge. 
And so the, the piece that I had to do at, at uh, Kennedy High School, this last comp championship competition, was to interview all these kids. You're just blown away talking to these kids about their core values project. The, these kids come up with things. They solve human solutions and problems, all of the things that you're talking about. This, this one group solved a problem for a person who couldn't move their head. They needed to be able to swim in the pool because they can't do physical jogging and all that. They came up with a tube around this person's head so that they could swim and breathe and get exercise. And I asked them, I says, and, they, and they, they divided the oxygen so that it, when they could breathe, that the water didn't come in. And all, all this, and they're just sitting there like, yeah, we, we figured it out. We did this. And I go, do, do you know that you could patent that? And they said, yeah, yeah, through the program, they, if they do something really significant, they get a free patent. So, so all I'm saying is, the things that you're doing here, I'm, I'm so excited about what you're doing here. This piece, pathway certification, pathway programs, the, the success um, profile, graduate success profile, link learning. Believe me, you know, we're, we're the, what, what our generation is the baby booms, and people have worked long now. There, I have people that are still working 40 years for me, haven't retired yet, but we got to go soon. We got to go soon. And if we develop these young people so that they think way outside the box because it's in them, it's so important that you develop this program. And the other big piece, the bonus for the school district, they want to come back to the district. They can't get it anywhere else. You could have the charter schools of tomorrow, but this program provides you an ability. You see, when you're, if you're running a business, you want to draw in customers. Who's your customer? Students, parents, if they find out that you can educate their child, they can get a career, move on and do something, they want to come to this school. They want to come to this district. That's the bonus. That's the piece that's so exciting about what this is all about. And I, and I say that with a passion from the standpoint that we have an opportunity. We have a huge opportunity to leverage these folks, to leverage yourselves, to, to en enlighten our kids so that they can become who they need to be in the future to help this country and to help this society. Thank you very much. So moving forward and okay, without the script. Moving forward, our, our work continues, and um, we plan to um, continue. Here we go. Continue to develop and refine our balanced system of instruction, curriculum, assessment, and accountability guided by our graduate profile. This will provide direction to staff and industry partners as they develop units of study with embedded assessments that engage students in motivating and challenging learning experiences that reflect the demands of a modern adult world. We will continue to work across all fronts to develop pathway, to build pathway district and regional capacity as our district and capital region develop a system of work-based learning. This ensures that all pathway students have access to appropriate and preferred types of rigorous work-based learning tailored to their industry sector. We plan to continue to build capacity of site leaders, principals, assistant principals, lead teachers, counselors, and industry partners so they become champions of the link learning approach and take on the heavy lifting required by this transformation of the high school experience. We plan to continue to advocate for and, sub and support robust student support networks so every student has what is needed to remain on track for college and career. And with the support of Sacramento Pathways to Success, a partnership for college to career, we plan to develop a broad-based coalition of industry leaders, a board of champions, who will share responsibility for sustaining a system of high quality pathways. This work will be the primary focus of our AB 790 grant. And the Pathways to Prosperity Network, a coalition of states, Jobs for the Future, and the Pathways to Prosperity Project at Harvard Graduate School of Education seeks to ensure that many more youth complete high school and attain a post-secondary credential with currency in the labor market. Each participating state is engaging educators and employers in building a system of grades 914 career pathways 
combining high school and community college experiences. Such pathways are intended to launch young people into initial careers while leaving open the prospect of future education. The California State Pathways to Prosperity Network is led by State Senator Daryl Steinberg, and he has selected the Sacramento and Long Beach regions as pilot sites for California. Sacramento Unified School District, Sacramento County Office of Education, and Los Rios Community College District will join forces to create the local pathways. The long-term goal is to create statewide systems of career pathways that serve students across the state. Key sectors of the economy identified for pathways building across the state includes information technology, health care, and advanced manufacturing. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to share this link learning work with you. I now return the podium to Dr. Olivine Roberts, Chief Academic Officer. Thank you, Teresa. So tonight, we have shared with you three key strategies. First, the Sacramento Pathways to Success, a key lever for creating seamless preschool to career opportunities and that makes um, earning a higher education degree or certificate attainable for every student. Second, the graduate profile, which outlines the competencies of what it means to be college and career ready. And lastly, linked learning, our primary approach for reforming our high school that is expanding access and creating options. The synergy of these efforts will afford our students authentic, rigorous, and relevant learning experiences that will better prepare them for college and career. That is our presentation, and we welcome your questions. Thank you. Um, we have public comment. Yes, we have nine comments on this item. The first five comments are from Leo Bennett Cochon, Dol Dulce Gomez, Kristen Shimabukuro, Charlotte Rutgliano, and Aliyah Peters. We heard the word over and over again, linked. And I think that's critical. You want a linked system that works with the kids to the smallest, to the oldest. What's good for the oldest? Smaller learning communities. It's more good for the littlest. What's good for Health Professions High School? You subsidize that school by 810K. That sum would keep six of your small elementary schools open. If it's worth having a small learning community to link to the jobs and careers, I think it's worth it to keep them linked to the neighborhoods. The PTA commented on college and readiness because it's the first pillar. And they stated that because there's no regard for educational quality in the criteria for schools being proposed for closure, this proposal is not in line with Pillar 1 of the strategic plan. Capacity and utilization as the sole criteria gives no indication as to whether this proposal creates more career and college-ready students. Again, I urge you, rethink, resend, and renew. Thank you. Hello, my name is Aaliyah Peters from the School of Engineering and Sciences. I am a senior that is with the FIRST Robotics Program, the FRC Systematic Eliminators, and I would like to tell you some more about the program. So the program at our school started, in, started two years ago and when we were a rookie team. From there, we've gotten various teachers that have helped us build our, help build our way through the system. So. Last year, we, as a second year team, we went the farthest out of all the district teams. And so last year we were number one in the district in our robotics for competing. We've also won various awards such as first place in industrial education at the California State Fair. We've also won various safety awards for our safety program. And then we've also won various awards with other schools throughout at the competition. 
Right now at, Dave, at UC Davis, our team is competing, again, for our third year with our robot. This is, gonna, this is a new step for our team because this, most teams, after it's a very hard for a third-year team to compete because it's very hard financially. But luckily, we were able to work our way with our finances. And so with the FIRST Robotics program, we were able to use all of, our, all of the link learning pathways to help us build our way. It's a, no, it's a version, it's a new version of a way to build our way to bridge the gap with the graduate profile. That way we can go from high school to college very easily because we're learning all the things that we need with the robotics program. And we can go from college to industry very easily because we're learning all the things that we need for the industry in robotics back when we started as sophomores or freshmen, or sometimes even seventh graders. And so I think with that, we learned the different skills. It helps build the skills for our, our team, for our seniors and for our juniors to, it makes it easier to go to college with everything. So thank you. Thank you. Um, hi, good evening. My name is Dulce Gomez. Uh, I'm a senior at Health Professions High School. Um, I'm just going to talk about the good stuff about uh, our school. Um, my school has helped me shape my career goals because it has introduced me to a wide, a wide variety of careers in the health professions, ranging from medical billing to like um, manufacturing medical equipment, surgery, and all those kind of things. Um, so far, my experience at that at this school has been awesome, and I wouldn't like trade it for anything else. Um, even though it's a small school, we don't have like sports and like um, and like a lot of electives. We are a small school, and we know each other, and we are really close to close with the teachers and everything. And I feel like this school. Um, has really made me confident because um, we do a lot of presentations and we build skills that help us that help us communicate with other people. Um, for example, um, last month we went to UC Davis and we were um, looking for mentors for our senior project and um, we did very good and. We got it. We, we got everything done, and um, our school is different from other high schools because uh, our school we do integrated units. Uh, an integrated unit it's a project where a um, group of three to four students work on a given topic and integrate it, and integrate all, all of their classes to the project. Um, oh, my favorite integrated unit was mi mixing medicine run out of time. Thank you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Hello, my name is Charlotte Ritigliano and I am a senior at Health Professions High School. After graduating Health Professions, I plan on attending Humboldt State University studying kinesiology to someday become a physical therapist. My experiences at health professions has prepared me for college for I am in my second year of AP English, my first year in AP Calculus, and I'm working with the IUPs or the integrated unit projects the past three years has helped me build teamwork and it, it be able to overcome many differences with other people. The workload of each project and the extensive research oh, hold on, for each long paper has prepared me for the short deadlines that college has. Also, being at Health Professions High School, it has given me the opportunity to take classes at Sacramento City um, College while still in high school. For the support at Health Professions, I've been able to work more one-on-one -on -one with teachers during class time and after hours. The teachers are always there to lend a helping hand and I've been able to work with our amazing counselor, Ms. Lopez, who is a blessing because she, no matter how hard a question you ask, she is always there to answer. No, 
and even if she doesn't have an answer, she will look it up and get back to you. From freshman year to now, I, have, I believe that I have matured a lot in my professional skills and have grown up quite a lot because of the pre presentations and group work and public speaking that I've done. Professionalism and community. I am currently working with my senior project mentor on setting up an internship to work with patients at UC Davis Cancer Center to help them cope with their experiences through poetry or other writings. Um, I am in several different clubs this year. Oh, yeah. Finish Thank your you. thought. Go ahead. Okay, well, um, I'm in several different clubs this year through my school, and one of them is creative writing, which is very near and dear to my heart. And we have been published in two books so far, and we have our third one coming up in June. So thank you. Thank you. Our next four comments are from Lorraine Larson Halleck, Nancy Hewitt, Efrain Cornejo, and Jessica Arriaga. Good evening, I'm Lorraine Larson Halleck. I'm a member of the Society of Women Engineers and I'm on the advisory board for the Science and Engineering School as a liaison and outreach for that organization. Um, I see this as a great opportunity to change some statistics. Three decades ago when I was getting my engineering degree, we had 20% women. And today, even though women are now close to 50% of all college enrollment, we have only 18% in engineering. And I think the model that you've been presented with today can significantly alter that statistic by, and especially at the School of Engineering and Science where they start at seventh grade, is engaging these young girls at an early age and pr providing them with the confidence and the motivation to go into the engineering, math, and science uh, curriculum. And I urge you as a board, I, mean, I think with these models, you have the opportunity to change the future of education and change the way our children are prepared for their futures. And I urge you to give your 100% support to these schools. I think when you're building a partnership type of collaboration, you need consistency in your leadership. And I really urge that you actively work to maintain your leadership. You have a good leadership team. I've been very impressed at, um, coming on to the board as to what your leadership team is putting forth. And then I would also like the board to actively and aggressively recruit women in your faculty, in your math, in your science, in your engineering. I think you can make some big inroads with providing that kind of role model. So thank you, and I think this is a really good program you're doing. Thank you. Hello, members of the board. I'm Nancy Hewitt. I'm on the advisory committee for the School of Science and Engineer Engineering and Sciences. And I'm also, a, I work with the ARB, and the ARB allowed me and another, my co-coordinator to start a volunteer group that recruits professional scientists and engineers to mentor um, at SES, the school that I'm on advisory committee on, uh, to mentor them as they perform, as they plan, as, as they design their science projects. We start in the fall. We work with them through March before the school science fairs and also the regional science fair. We've had, we've, this is, we've completed our fourth year. Five years ago, when we, uh, we developed an ARB award, we went out to the regional science fair. We discovered that Sac City Unified School District students were very, um, Underrepresented, upper represented compared to many of the other schools like Mira Loma, the Folsom schools, the Davis schools. And we decided one way to rectify this was to start working, mentoring uh, <clears throat> Sac City students. And we were invited to work with SES. Among our successes, working with the schools of partnership for the first time, uh, all students 
at SES 7th through 12th grade are required to do science projects. And over the, also, uh, just to mention, uh, the curriculum, the teaching, the mentoring, everything's improved every single year. The science fair has improved. We, we bring a lot of judges to help out. And we've also had students uh, talk about, pro I forgot to mention, talk about project-based learning, science projects are project-based learning. And they're hands-on. And they, science projects help increase, I'm out of time, help increase critical thinking. And we've got winners from the regional science fair over the last four years. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Board members, I'm Jessica Arriaga. Um, I can say that these types of programs do work. I graduated from Hiram Johnson and I was part of the corporate academy. So my mom thankfully got me into a program that gave me the computer skills to, to and they had a unique partnership with Franchise Tax Board, which I interned for and I did have a part time job there. So these types of programs do work. They do. That's where I have the job that I have, and that's I assess it all to that education. I just like to know. I was fortunate to find this program. I'd like to know how parents are selected, how children are selected, how how are they marketed? Are you going to the middle schools to let them know that these programs are out there? How is it that they get selected and put into these programs? Um, I'd also like to know um, if these programs offer any type of workshops for financial aid or scholarship writing and how to find scholarships because you are you are providing a basis of how to, that you can go to college and you're preparing them for college, but do they have all the resources and financial resources to actually go follow through on that dream that you've now given them this inspiration, this hope and desire for? So or is that also part of the support system available to the students? I'd be really like to, to have some more information on that. So thank you. Okay. Same board member uh, wish to discuss or have any questions? Right, board member Rodriguez. Thank you. President Cunha. Um, yeah, I do. Uh, first of all, I just want to say that um, I am a supporter of um, programs that um, help students learn um, in order to be successful in some type of career. Um, I was a, um, believe it or not, I graduated high school over 20 years ago, almost 25 now. Um, so I was a person who benefited from having special programs offered. Um, at the school. Um, mind you, I did not go to a small high school to get these programs offered to me. Um, I had computer programming. I had office skills. I had accounting actually uh, introduced to me and uh, a full-fledged introductory to accounting class when I was in high school. Um, so so there, there is a, a definite career path that can be selected for one when uh, programs are offered to them um, at a younger age. Um, however, when I think about the Obama uh, initiative, going from cradle to college to career, it's not going from high school to college to career. We seem to forget that high school students develop from junior high students or middle school students. And those students could develop out of elementary school students. And, um, you know, I'm sitting here with this enrollment um, numbers, and I, I'm looking at these as you were doing your presentation. And I can't help but see that, you know, we have many of these small facilities um, that have few students in them. And, um, you know, this is one of my concerns, is that do these programs necessitate that they are in operating in their own facility? 
um, you know, I like the programs. Let's just put that straight. I like these programs. I'm not trying to disband these programs. They should remain the way they, they are in the curriculum that they're running in. But do they have to be at a small facility that's costing the district money? Um, can they be combined with our high schools that have room in them? Uh, you know, I look at Rosemont, and Rosemont is not to its fullest capacity. Um, can we combine some of these programs with those high schools, area, areas that have room? Sacramento, um, former Sacramento High School has room at their facility. Um, you know, and I think that there's something wrong, and this is why I voted no on the other proposal. When we have to close seven elementary schools for a million dollars, a little over a million dollars, and yet we're putting a million dollars extra into these small facility environments because those students are not graduating. And I looked on the CDE website. These students are not graduating with their A through, A through G requirements. Therefore, they're not able to get into that four year as soon as they graduate. So I think we need to board. I think we need to rethink this. This is an information item for us. And it makes a difference whether we make a decision on supporting this program in the facilities that they're at or supporting this program in a new and an inventive way where all children, and maybe even more so, more of these children, be, just by the fact that we can have these programs co-located on a comprehensive high school environment, we might get more children into these STEM careers. And I am familiar with those FRC um, competitions. I went to the one at, at Kennedy um, not too long ago. And um, I really liked what I saw. In fact, it was very reminiscent of the education that I got in college at DeVry University where everyone was involved. You had the financial um, people involved. You had the, you know, the publicists or the media um, and then you had your engineers and your scientists. You had everybody part of that team. And that could only work in a comprehensive high school environment because that way you weren't focused on just one thing. It, it was able to lend itself. And that team actually was way impressive than these other teams that were lacking in some other areas. Colleges and universities do it across our state. They house different schools of learning on the same campus. I don't understand why we can't do that as a school district and start to be more inventive. Take care of our little ones, take care of our middle school kids, and when it comes to high school, create an environment that is just like what they're going to see when they go to college. Multiple studies, multiple areas of study, and it gives them an opportunity to go and say, maybe I'm not a robotics person, Maybe I'm a business person. And they can then shift around and find the area that they really like. As you heard, I was in computer programming, and I was also in accounting. And I went the accounting pathway. So it had not been for that experience. I would have never known whether I wanted to go CIS or accounting or finance or business. The other question that I have is... Um, on these pathway links, looking at these, uh, the enrollments that we have, there's a large increase, significant in increase at, of enrollment at Cap City and at American Legion. Um, and I don't hear any of those high schools being talked about. When we talk about, when you opened up, Ms. Olivine Roberts, uh, you opened up and we said, for all students, those are our students too. And so are these linked pathways going to be offered at those schools as well? If I may draw to your attention, um, I do not recall the slide number, but we did speak to the American Legion having culinary arts and business. So there are two pathways that are at American Legion. How about Cap City? 
Cap City, because of the mobility of the students, there, there may be one or two weeks. It's very difficult to cultivate and foster a pathway at Cap City. So Cap City has enrollment of... But it's the, this, the time that the students are there, the longevity. So it's something that we may need to investigate and research. But even with the work that's being done at American Legion, American, the two pathways that are there will never be able to become linked learning pathways because they're not able to have all four components um, implemented with fidelity. I will yield to Teresa McEwen who can provide more data. I guess part of my answer would be that one of the reasons that we're um, putting these pathways in place is to keep more students in school, in the comprehensive high school, in the small high schools, and lessen the need for alternative programs such as um, American Legion and the independent study programs. Superintendent, um, I'd like to see some more data in terms of um, why the two schools, Cap City and American Legion, have increased since 2009 um, in their enrollment, um, specifically the reasons. Um, and then when I see a high school like Hiram Johnson drop in enrollment, um, and that is one of our um, priority schools, and I also see a high school, Luther Burbank and Rosemont. So we have three high schools that are dropping enrollment, comprehensive, and then we have two alternative schools that are increasing in enrollment, um, especially Cap City, significantly. And you don't have to answer that today. Just if you can um, report out to the board in an email, that would be, that would be suffice. The one, the one thing I do want to respond to, um, <clears throat> just related to American Legion, um, <clears throat> again, it's a continuation high school. This is a high school for students that are significantly under uh, under credited. That school... Uh, just a few years ago was graduating less than 50 students a year. It's now going to go over 100 this year. Uh, it never had any pathways. In fact, when we arrived just a little over three years ago, there were about seven pa academies or pathways in the school district. And you've heard tonight that there's 28, 14 established, and, and, and 14 more coming. You know, we'll be happy to provide more, more detail. But this is a, a comprehensive approach with, with work-based learning that's not only at our high schools, but it's being pushed down into our middle schools and into our, our elementary schools. And at the very beginning of the presentation, and I, I don't think you were here at the dais, but you know, we spent a lot of time talking about our, our Sacramento Pathways to Success, which, which is a pre-K-20 partnership. You saw evidence this evening of, of some partners here from Sac State who in just a few short months have created two very robust industry driven industry-led pathways that, that have young people tremendously excited about showing up to school every, every day, whether that's at a comprehensive high school or you know, whether it's at a smaller high school, providing a, a, a more engaging, structured learning environment uh, which suits their needs. Is that all, Board Member Rodriguez? Board Member Hanson? Thank you. Uh, I'm a really big supporter of career tech education, link learning, so I'm very excited to hear the work that you've done and learn about the successes. I love hearing from the students and hearing the positive things that the district's doing. We don't hear enough of that here in this room. Uh, at least, at least in, in the last five meetings I've been here, I know we've had to focus on other things. So this is uh, uh, really positive to hear. I'm curious about some of the different uh, parts that I've heard. Um, the A through G, uh, I'm particularly interested in. I saw that it said that that was going to be part of the core components. Could you explain a little bit more what the goal is? I didn't understand. Are you? Is that your goal to have every student be a through G compliant by the time they graduate or is it something else? So the linked learning pathway that is statewide that is established through ConnectEd via the Irvine Learning, um, excuse me, the Irvine Foundation, 
they determine the four core components, not Sac City. So one of the four key components is UC A to G ready. Um, in regard to Sac City and the requirements of all of our students being UC A to G ready, that is now being um, discussed in our graduate um, proposed graduation requirement task force. So that is something that we'll be bringing to the board hopefully in the near future about how do we indeed prepare our students to be college and career ready. Um, currently, the standards that we have, the graduation requirements that we have are not college career ready. So what does that mean? And so we're looking at multiple options and we'll be bringing that to the board hopefully in the near future. So in uh, my previous life, I, I was appointed by the state superintendent to create the, you know, be one of the people on the CTE standards and frameworks curriculum committee. So I spent two years as one of the drafters of that language and followed it all the way through to the passage by the State Board of Education. And one of the concerns that I had that I learned as we went on A3G courses, you know, for one, you know, the UC system is geared toward 7% of the students in the state of California, but a lot of districts were pushing 100% of their students to be A through G certified, and those districts found dropout rates go up. San Jose was one of the first implementers of that, and they're now backing off from that. So I hope that we look at the lessons that are learned when we try to force all of our students to look at the A through G certification. And we also found that CTE courses are very disadvantaged with the UC's A through G system because the vast majority of CTE courses are certified as G, not as A, B, C, D, E, or F. You know, they don't qualify for all those, other, all those other pieces. So a lot of districts actually lost more CTE courses when they became A through G because there's so much of an emphasis on those first uh, letters and fulfilling those requirements. Um, so I'm very concerned about that because when I hear the stories about what people are accomplishing, that's what I think, you know, we should focus on. And, you know, we need to have pathways for people who want to go to the UC and if they have to, you know, if the UC regents have determined that they have to be A through G compliant, we certainly need to make that option available to any student who wants to do that. But I hope we look very seriously at what's involved if we decide that we want to do that for everybody because I think it'll be very detrimental to our linked learning CTE courses. So it's just a, a cautionary note. Um, you know, for instance, a lot of auto shop, you know, programs. I know I liked hearing the story that the gentleman talked about before. Uh, auto shops are closing all around, all around the state because you can't find teachers for it. They're not A through G certified very often and you know, that's a real loss. And some of the other work that I've done in construction careers and different than manufacturing, I, I sit on a task force with the president of the California Manufacturers Association. He tells me every time we come to a meeting, he talks about how many job openings are available in machining because people don't have the skills that we're able to provide some of our students here because those auto, you know, those shops are closing down. But those are jobs that start off at $75,000 a year with full health benefits for the worker and their family. I mean, that's a successful job. That's a great career. And if we can help prepare students to do that, you know, we are really doing our job. And the parents in this district will be very happy. Um, and I just also, no, I, I guess I'll just, I'll, I'll leave it there. I don't know if you have any feedback on that, but. Well, one of the things that we are committed to is that we provide multiple opportunities, post-secondary opportunities. So may it be um, a technical school, may it be a two-year community college, a full year. So we want our students to have an array of options, and then they choose. And so we are re-examining, as I stated earlier, the graduation requirements, and we're looking at multiple ways as to how we can have our students when they leave us to be indeed college career ready. Thank you. Thank you. Um. Given, given that we have four minutes until 10.30, and we have three more or four more uh, items on the agenda, what, what is the board's pleasure? I'll move to extend to 11.15. Uh, uh, Member Hanson had his item. Um, I, I would say maybe we uh, put over the coherent governance uh, items, and maybe we can 
do that at the next meeting and wrap up this That's item table, right? unless there's some urgency to that. The one issue that I, I just spoke to the superintendent, they are on a timetable. Um, so we have uh, basically uh, all of the coherent, the, the, the policies that we operate under have to come back and be kind of reviewed and voted on during certain times. The, I will say from past experience, the conversations are fairly quick, very quick. We can use a linked learning workshop for time management. <laughs> the uh, board might be valuable. You can teach us something about that. But. Point taken. I, I think we'll want to ask, do we have public comment on those? We do. We have uh, about two public comments per agenda item. I, I think given the hour and I think, I don't know, I, I, this is the first time I'm actually going to say I kind of want to bring them over to the next meeting. And I, I would agree with, with Member Hansen. Uh, I mean, you know, Ben Rodriguez, we've been very very allowable over this meeting to allow members to speak their mind. Um, so, uh, Member Pritchett, we, we need to do these, though. We really do. I don't mean to. I won't take phone. very long. I just wanted to thank you guys for coming out and giving us this presentation and uh, the staff, the administrators and the students and everyone that, that came out to show their support and do this. My daughter is a, um, a student at Rosemont High, and she's in the Kappa um, Academy. And so um, I, I see firsthand what this is doing. So I just wanted to give you a, a silent applause for what the work that you are doing. <laughs> We have a motion on the floor to by Vice President Wu to go to eleven fifteen. You want to go sooner? You want to go ten? You want to go eleven? We we should get this done quickly. I'll I'll, I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Yeah. Member Rodriguez abstentions. Okay, we're until eleven. I would just say briefly, thank you very much. Uh, you guys are doing fabulous work. Um, I have some questions. I'll, I'll email you. Um, but I, I appreciate all the hard work and, and the dedication to the kids in our in our district. Thank you. Thank you. Um, item nine point four: Current Governance Operational Expectation Six. It's a conference and action item. Financial Administration. Uh, Superintendent Raymond. Thank you, President Cuneo. Um, you know, as as we have done in the past under these. Um, coherent governance monitoring reports. Um, we have several this evening um, because we haven't been bringing them in the last few months given other items on the agenda. Uh, this one is OE6, which is our financial administration. And as we have um, done and will continue to do, I'll simply uh, open it up to see if there's any questions by board members and, um, and respond. And, and if there isn't, we, will, we, can, we, we can move on. Let's have a public comment, please. We have public comment on 9.4 from Leo bennett Cochon and Jessica Ariaga. Yes. I'm not able to find your coherent uh, governance documents online, but staff was able to give me your um, governance culture. And I would just point out that normally it states operating expenditures will be included on the consent agenda unless the majority have questions about the superintendent or policy content is to be debated. So I'm hoping you're going to debate today since it's not on the consent agenda. Hey, I love being commenting. So anyway, very quickly, I'm on page 7 where the interpretation is that the district must provide a balanced budget. And I call your attention to the document that I provided you which shows that in the 2012 you did not have a final budget you were negative 28 mil. So I would ask perhaps that you find exception in terms of compliance. And it shows also that you have a 24 mil variance. I would hope that you could improve in terms of financial administration. It also states that the unaudited actual financial report, which was presented to you on 10-4-12, reflected year-end fund balances. That's true, but that's parsing language because your final budget, again, didn't reflect what was actually going on and having to wait to October to find out you had $10 million extra to me is not good. On page 9, it says that reports need to be accurate. 
I will point out that as a person that was trained to hide money, it's hiding money, it is not using prior year ADA. You have to force the software to use prior year ADA. So next year, you're right now stating that you're going to use real year ADA. And in declining enrollment, just like this year, you can use prior year. It's an effective way to hide money. I won my award that way. You also have a reserve. If you look on your page, not seeing it right now, but and it'll say that your reserve is a million above because it's 2.2 not 2%. It's enough to keep schools open. Thank you. I hear two, so I'll make it quick. <laughs> Um, I'm Jessica Arriaga. Um, there's been a lot of talk about healthcare and the cost of healthcare, and you know that every year it's going to go up. But I know that it's a process to start discussions about how you're going to change benefits. You have to negotiate with unions. There's going to be an extensive process if you're going to do any major reduction to benefits. So when will that start? When will you start looking at your premiums, who you're covering, how the percentage of are you paying, are you covering entire families? What types of changes are you going to make? Because those negotiations are going to take long periods of time. So I can't wait two years for your premiums to go up 22% before you decide to take aggressive action on putting yourselves in a position where you can negotiate with healthcare beneficiaries and healthcare with healthcare reform and the in, increasing costs that it's going to cover. So I really would like to know and really like to see some real discussion as to what your current plan of action is going to be to offset those millions of dollars that you're anticipating because you know that that's coming. So I would hope that with the closures of schools, you're not reacting, you're being proactive and deciding that we have a problem. It's next year. It's going to go up 11%. You already know that. So I'd like to see some action taken on that. Thank you. Um, I'll make the motion to move it from conference to action. Second. And second by Vice President Wu. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? It is now in action. Board Member Rodriguez. Thank you, President Cuno. Um, I continue to have an issue about these monitoring reports and that, um, we, they are still being done by the person that they're basically monitoring themselves. So in this case, it's the superintendent. Um, I, I still question how can we do this better? Um, and with that said, I think that um, there's one evidence of compliance factor that I do want to commend, given that we had a um, presentation earlier and we had a dip down to nearly 40 million dollars in deficit and yet despite that we still were at 95.9 percent in compliance with paying our bills on time um so i do want to say that for the at least the not so rainy days <laughs> and gloomy so thank you very much um but i continue to have issues with all of these reports and that uh every every time they come forward it makes me feel very uncomfortable that we have one person basically watching their own hen house and nobody's doing a, ch a, a count to see how many chickens there really are versus how many eggs. So, thanks. I will move to um, find the OE policy to be in compliance. Second. Second by Vice President Wu. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? I am. Member Rodriguez is opposed. Abstentions? Found to be in compliance. 9.5, Coherent Governance, Operational Expectation 7, Asset Protection Monitoring Report. Superintendent Raymond. Thank you, President Cuneo. The, um, <clears throat> this is OE7, which is Asset Protection, and uh, I will uh, entertain any questions that board members may have. I will move from conference to action. No, no, no. Oh, I'm sorry, public comment. We have one comment on 9.5 from Leo Benekashon. Your board report used to be uh, numbered by pages, and I found it easier to tell you where to look back then. I might suggest that again. 
But anyway, I'm on OE 7.5, and there's statements commending the fact that we have 20 and 36 and 20 year old forced air HVAC systems. Uh, at my school, as we look at our energy audits, those systems are considered antiquated, and so whatever savings there might be that they're still in place could be wasted in terms of their inefficiencies. And then the second statement says that the average useful life of a modular building is 20 years. Oak Ridge has a 54-year-old one, there's a 26-year-old one, and there's a 58-year-old one. Again, we're told that that is not a good use to be able to force these portables so far beyond. They were never designed. They're not aesthetically pleasing. They're not the best of environments. So again, it might not be the most efficient thing to be able to sustain them. Uh, on the next page, Operation 7.6, Reckless Legal Liability. I would just like to read Fruit Ridge Elementary, Washington Elementary, C.P. Huntington Elementary, Joseph Bonheim Elementary, Mark Hopkins Elementary, C.B. Wire Elementary, and Maple Elementary, all of which are exposing you to reckless legal liability for budget dust. Thank you. I'll renew my motion from conference to action with the second from Vice President Wu. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Extensions. We are in action. Saying no. We have a move. Uh, we have a. I'm taking it. You're going to move that the OE policy is to be in compliance. Found to be in compliance. Second by myself. All in favor? Aye. Opposed. Aye. Opposed. Member Arroyo. Uh, member Rodriguez. Uh, abstentions. And that passes. 9.6, Coherent Governance Operational Expectations, number 11. It's OE11. It's Discipline Monitoring Report. Superintendent Raymond. Thank you, President Cuneo. Um, OE11 is the, the Discipline Monitoring Report, and I'll take um, questions from board members. Public comment, please. Public comments from Leo Bennett-Cachon and Darlene Anderson. Good evening. OE 11.1, page 2, speaks about the superintendent appropriately involving the community. Again, I call your attention to the PTA, who states that decisions are being made in silo. They're omitting input from families and communities. A proposal committed without the inclusion of the various district committees listed here does not support a vision of family and community engagement being at the forefront. Thank you. Good evening, Darlene Anderson. You know, I looked at a little bit of uh, American Legion. I've been looking at American Legion, I want to say, for about, mm, maybe about 10 or 15 years. And I understand the graduation rate, and I understand that I've come here, talked to board members, and I understand that the board has done nothing. So even if you have a pathway to somewhere, I'm looking at the GPA over there and the kids where they're really scoring, and the 0% really doesn't get it for me. Quite frankly, in Sacramento, when I come to talk to this governing board about African-American students, I get kind of brushed off. And in Sacramento, when you talk about the student achievement for African-Americans, well, that's kind of brushed off too. Because quite frankly, Prop 209 did it for a lot of people. It safeguarded a lot of people where they didn't have to really target failure by race. And so when you look at the failure rate in this district regarding African-American students, you have to ask yourself another question. Are they citizens? Do they pay taxes? Should their children have the same rights as every other child to achieve and be successful? And I would say yes. But then there are those who would probably disagree, who would support a board policy that would perhaps say, behavior determines your right to have a public education. 
Yet and still, that's not what a free and appropriate publication education is in America. That's really the only right you have. That's the only thing that you can really do to have an opportunity for life, is to get a public education. But yet in this district, the dropout rate for African Americans, and this information about this process of the tighten, ooh, tighten up regulations regarding behavior and the number of kids that you're pushing through this process. Well, you know, I will say that I have already contacted the Office of Civil Rights. I've co contacted the Department of Justice. I've written back east. I've talked to a lot of people. But quite frankly, it's a local issue and it's a governing board issue. And until the community, the African American community, is ready to sue this district for the failure of its children in the public school system, you will not appreciate it. Because apparently the third governing board, I mean, the third leg of the law is the justice system. And it is just us that is being excluded in Sacramento. Thank you. Thank you. I will move it from conference to action. Second. The second by Vice President Wu. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? We are in action. I will move the item that the board finds this OE policy to be in compliance. Second by Vice President Wu. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We have board member Rodriguez opposed. Abstentions. The ayes have it. Um, found to be in compliance. 9.7 coherent governance. Operational expectations number 12. Learning environment monitoring report. Superintendent Raymond. Thank you, President Cunio. Again, on this monitoring report, OE 12, which is the learning environment, I'll uh, take any questions board members may have. Public comment. We have two comments on 9.7 from Leo Bennett Cachon and Darlene Anderson. I realize it's late. I thank you for your forbearance. It did take me two hours to get here due to freeway accidents. I'm on page two, OE 12. It says that this is interpreted that schools will keep students safe and secure from physical or emotional harm. I've been out visiting schools. I can tell you there is emotional harm happening. The PTA pointed out that there's no clear path between closing schools and improving our district. I've been trying to do common core, focus on informational text. I'd like to diverge now to literature. Every kid down in Skillville liked their schools a lot, but the Grinch, who lived just north of Schoolville, did not. The Grinch hated poor neighborhoods. In every single season, no ask why, no one quite knows the reason. Staring down from his office with a wrinkled, furrowed frown, the Grinch conspired to turn education upside down. Small schools are too dear, he snarled with a sneer. This is the Acopolis. It is practically dear. <laughs> it's no time like now for closure to be coming. For before all the school girls and boys would wake up bright and early, they'd walk to the classroom with a disposition, not slurly. But then, oh, that Grinch and his planning of plans, he decided no more. I will stop this if I can. So the Grinch, so much wisdom, my idea is the best, the best, the best. The only way to teach is that capacity, capacity, capacity. And all the school girls and all the school boys could come to school now with the least bit of joys. They couldn't smile, they couldn't dance, they couldn't jump, they couldn't sing. They could have interventions until the bell rings. And those teachers, the Grinch said, I must figure out a way for them to go. And so it was the plan of the old Grinch to hand out pink slips and watch the dance flow. What value could be added by the Grinch's plans? A system where virtually nothing was nice. If not for the boys and girls, the teachers would have quit. They would have cried long before. It's enough with this spit. But, in fact, they did not go down without a fight. They plotted and planned all through the night. And I will share more of that next time. Good evening, Darlene Anderson once again. You know, I was looking at this, a lot of the documentation in here, the, perhaps like the pie meetings, and my sister started the pie meetings so long ago in this district, but the purpose was so that the schools could really utilize community partners that would come in and send staff to understand what the city had to offer. But quite frankly, 
because it was her idea, it kind of stopped right there. The community people come in and, the dis and they meet with each other and talk about services that they have. And I don't really believe the schools really utilize those programs. As a matter of fact, I don't believe, I believe that a lot of people partner with the district, but the district does not have the ability to really drive the community together. And so, although you can document that you have evidence that you did a meeting, I really can't say you had a lot of people attending, and it really makes a difference if you're gonna engage the community. The failure rate in this district for the people that you're trying to support is atrocious. And I would say that even though you have, Sacramento has partners, Sacramento itself really doesn't look favorably on people who receive benefits or aid. You know, they're kind of like, mm, those people, because that's what Sacramento's about. Sacramento caters to the more affluent community. And I find that our tax dollars are going to educate the more affluent people too, because it seems that in this district that it was a board policy that they could always use race as a particular benefit to help support other schools. So they've been moving minority children around for a long time. It's just that nowadays, the minority children are so dysfunctional that now everybody has a job based on a service provided to a person in poverty. And I really think that this district needs to change. But the only way of change is to probably remove the current board and remove the current staff in this district. Thank you. Thank you, I will move it from Conference to action. Second. Move the second by Vice President Wu. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Oops. You're opposed to moving it from conference to action? No. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay. <laughs> so we're, okay, we're in action. Um, Member uh, Hansen. Just had a, a quick comment. I suppose that we, because we're partnering with Senator Steinberg, that we supported his legislation, Senate Bill 790, that adds graduation requirements to the API reports of uh, schools. I know that that was something that CSBA had worked on and I assume that Sac City was part of that as well. Uh, it's, it's actually SB 1458. And um, <clears throat> yes, we're, we, in fact, we're part of a, an advisory group that's trying to advise on the 40%, which can be things other than, uh, than test scores to, to define the new API. Excellent, yes. yes, that is the bill. Thank you for the, the correction. So. Just for our speaker, I hope she didn't leave the room, maybe she already did, but just want her to know that graduation rates should and will, you know, are going to be part of the uh, grading for schools, which I think is a very good thing. So it helps make everything more transparent and hopefully uh, will satisfy those in the community who are paying particular attention to that and is, is important. Thank you. Thank you, Member Hansen. I will move that the uh, Board of Education finds this OE policy to be in compliance. Second. I have a second by Vice President Wu. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. We have an opposed. Oh, let me do the opposed first. Aye. So we have uh, an opposition by uh, Board Member Rodriguez and Board Member Arroyo. Abstentions? We have an abstention by Member Pritchett. The uh, motion does not pass. What's the Board's pleasure? Well, our options are someone can make a motion that it be not in compliance, someone can make a motion that it can be in compliance with exceptions. We could um, elect to continue the matter, and if there are any specific issues that board members have, they can s email the superintendent, board member Hanson. Oh. I move that we continue the item. I second that motion. Okay, so we have a, a motion to uh, continue the item to an, a meeting in the future. Okay, the next meeting with a uh, second by uh, Member Rodriguez. All those in favor? Yes. Opposed? Abstentions? We will have moved the item to the next meeting. Can I make a, a request as well of all board members, those of us who did not support this, um, that we make a concentrated effort to sit with the superintendent to discuss our um, objections to this report so that we can give him a fair opportunity to... Uh, reevaluate the areas in which we are um, having the issue with. I would agree. We get the board packet on Friday night. We have almost a full week to digest it, look at it, think about it, review it, 
engage with the superintendent on any issues that we seem uh, fit to, where he can come back with appropriate responses. I would urge the board to do that as diligently as it can. 10.0, business and financial information reports. They are received. 11.0, future board meeting dates and locations, April 4, 2013, 4.30 p.m. closed session, 6.30 p.m. open session here at the Cerner Center. April 18, 2013, 4.30 p.m. closed session, 6.30 p.m. open session, again here at the Cerner Center. We have a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. We have a motion to adjourn by oh, wow. student member so Yee. <laughs> and a second by member Hanson. All those in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? We are adjourned. All right. <laughs> 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 Just popped on some YouTube. <laughs>